Apologies. Hello, good evening. This is Avery Gosfield. I'm the director of the Yudisha Musik und Theatervoke Dresden, and I'm very happy uh, to welcome Nesim Benjoya to our festival tonight. It's our only online um, event, and he's here to talk about the Izmir Jewish Heritage Project. Uh, Nesim, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, of course. Uh, first of all, Avery, I uh, thank you very much for allowing me to uh, uh, promote my project in your festival because uh, these occasions are very uh, valuable for us, you know, for people, for people to uh, know uh, about the Jewish heritage of Izmir. I am Nesim Banjoya. I am working on this project almost for uh, 14 years. Um, I was born in Izmir, uh, then lived abroad for quite a long time in Israel. Uh, I dealt in cinema, and uh, I still do. But uh, 14 years ago, when I came back to Izmir, to the city of my birth, uh, I discovered the, the, this heritage, actually, which fascinated me. And since then, I'm... Uh, I'm really very much engaged in it. Okay, well, tell us a little bit about it. Okay. Now, as, as you might understand, Izmir Jewish Heritage Project uh, deals with Izmir in Turkey. And uh, I cannot move the pictures, the screens somehow. Okay. Now, where is Izmir in Turkey? Uh, this is not my, okay. The Jewish people in Turkey, uh, there have been always Jews in Turkey and in Izmir. Um, and their present states uh, from 2,500 more or less uh, years. Uh, but uh, the Jews that live now, that are present now in Turkey, in Izmir, are mostly, they are completely actually, the Jews that came from Spain after the Inquisition in 1492. Here we see the routes of the Jews follow, and the red routes are the Jews, that represent the Jews that came to the uh, Ottoman Empire, and a big group came to what is today Turkey. And we're talking about the Izmir Jews, a Jews who emigrated to Turkey, to, to Izmir, actually lived around Izmir. So this is Izmir, okay? This is the Izmir Bay. This is the Aegean Sea. These are the Greek islands. And if you draw a straight line from Izmir to the west, you hit Athens. This is a where Izmir is, and Jews settle around Izmir in the villages. Within this city, in the center of the city, we uh, meet the old Jewish quarter. The old Jewish quarter is situated in the uh, old historic market of Izmir. And I have uh, marked here the area of the Jewish uh, of the Jewish um, quarter, old Jewish quarter, that the project takes place. Uh, the, uh, we have to understand that uh, the in the Ottoman Empire uh, in Izmir there were different uh, districts characterized by their ethnic or religious uh, uh, belonging. Um, next to, uh, above, or at this part, if you see the prompter, this is the Turkish, uh, uh, this was the Turkish district. Uh, this was the um, Jewish district. And uh, to the left, uh, which means to the north, uh, there was the Armenian district, then the Greek, and then the European district. So there were 
different districts. One of them was a, a, a Jewish district. What we concentrate on in this area uh, are nine synagogues that uh, had remained from these times. I have numbered them for you, if you see them. One, two, three, four, five, six on this side of this street that is called Synagogues Street, and three more synagogues and the chief rabbinate on the, to the south of the Synagogue Street, which is here, okay? So if we uh, look at this, let's see, okay, now we see it for more, uh, it, it is uh, uh, seen uh, better. Uh, we have the same synagogues, and between them, between the two groups of the synagogues, we have the synagogues bazaar, actually. This is the name of the street, and it was the main uh, commercial acts of the Jewish uh, quarter. You would hear, the, hear, you would hear uh, in this street vendors uh, cry, shouting out their merchandise in Ladino language which is the, the language uh, that Jews spoke, the, uh, still do speak. Um, uh, Ladino is the 15th century uh, Spanish, actually. Uh, and as the Jews leave Spain, uh, they are stuck with the Spanish uh, from the 15th century, whereas uh, the Spanish of, in Spain has developed and evolved and changed a bit. Uh, quite uh, a lot, and we are uh, speaking still this Spanish with a lot of modification and uh, and uh, with Turkish words that are conjugated in Spanish and French words, etc., etc. It's uh, um, it's uh, very amusing, but this is our language. Um, well, when I say this is our language, I mean I have to open up a parenthesis because I might be the last generation that knows Ladino. It is not uh, used anymore, as there are no Jews in this uh, district uh, anymore. They have moved uh, elsewhere. In 48 to Israel, you know, big masses, and, uh, and also those who stayed there to uh, other uh, districts. Okay, so what is the vision? The vision of this project is, let's say like that, okay, in order to explain the vision, I'm gonna, oh, sorry, okay. Uh, it, this area, imagine that this area is closed from the above, there is a roof on it, on the top of it. What we get, that there's not going to be a roof of a, 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 on such a big area, right? Uh, but let's just imagine, let's imagine that it's transparent. So we see what's uh, beneath, okay? It is closed, there is a roof and, and, and there is an entrance through the gate of the museum, let's say. And there are streets, where is my prompt? Okay, those streets, this one, and this one, and all the streets here are the corridors of this museum that we imagine that is uh, with, a, with a roof, but actually it's open. And each synagogue here, we have quite a lot, nine. These are nine sections of a museum. So actually in two sentences, this is the vision, okay? But here we talk about buildings. Uh, buildings have stories. Buildings have a, a, a Judaica in them. So this makes quite an impressive uh, museum. Let's start with one section of this open air museum. This is Bikur Cholim Synagogue. Bikur Cholim Synagogue. Uh, Bikur Cholim means hospital, actually, visiting the sick. And uh, this name was given to, to this synagogue because at the, at the basement of it, uh, the sick people uh, during the many epidemics that happened in Izmir were hospitalized. 
Uh, although the first name of the synagogue was Chavez Synagogue, Chavez is a last name uh, from Portugal. And uh, why Chavez? Because there was a Salomon uh, Chavez, Salomon de Chavez, who left Portugal uh, for Amsterdam and then immigrated to Izmir. And this man was very wealthy. He was a, a uh, he was a, a a rich man, and he was also uh, he he did a lot of charity. So he had actually a couple of streets that were called Chavez District. I mean, these are names not uh, not only in our uh, consciousness. These are registered street names in the Ottoman Empire. Okay, so. Uh, um, so the Bikur Cholim synagogue was built by Chavez, donated by this man. Uh, the name was Chavez. Then it became Bikur Cholim. Uh, and it is a very uh, typical Sephardic uh, synagogue. With why? Because we have the Teva. I mean, we call that Teva. Ashkenazi people would call it Bima. Okay. This is the uh, the pulpit, the altar, uh, actually, um, and uh, it is in the middle, in the center of the praying hall. Okay, and then in front of it we have uh, the uh, echal. We call that echal in Europe. Uh, Ashkenazi uh, uh, um, Jews call it a uh, Aron Hakodesh. Okay, uh, but it is the same thing. And uh, I always lose my prompter. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, I mean, I'm I'm in this cupboard with the uh, with the uh, blue paroche with blue cor curtain. Okay, uh, and look at the sitting form. I mean, the, you sit in the synagogue around the teva. And at the bottom of the table, there are more seats that encircle it. And you sit in it in such a way that you face one the other. Okay? In, uh, op, uh, I mean, in contrast, maybe uh, from the, to the European uh, synagogues where it's frontal. Okay? The, 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 uh, Chacham, the rabbi addresses his audience, his congregation frontal. Okay, when we walk about one minute from Bikur Cholim on the main street, you know, this is the main avenue, not in the bazaar, but it's, it's, it, it divides the bazaar in two parts. We have here a house of three uh, uh, stories, and this is the house of Shabtai Tzvi. Who is Shabtai Tzvi? Well, that's a Shabtai Tzvi. Is that Who is Shabtai Tzvi? We know. Yeah. But go on and explain. Oi vey, oi vey smil. <laughs> okay. Who is Shabtai Tzvi? Uh, if you know who he is, then I'll stop. But maybe I'll just say uh, two no, words. I, I know who he is. I don't think the other people do. So please explain. Okay. Shabtai Tzvi is, a, is the son of a Jewish family who came from an island from Greece and settled in Izmir in, uh, in, in a very early 17th century. And Shabtai Tzvi born, was born in 1620 in this house. And he grew up here. Shabtai Tzvi was a, he, he was born on Tisha B'Av. Tisha B'Av is the day of the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. Okay? And, uh, uh, and he, he was a very, very intelligent and, 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 and a very um, a young man. And he learned, he studied Torah, like a lot of people then, because we're talking about a very religious community, uh, and Kabbalah, Torah and Kabbalah. He learned that 
uh, by the uh, most leading rabbis in his very then. That were Joseph Escapa and Isaac the Alba. And slowly, uh, he, I mean, this, this is the way he is described. He is, uh, you know, he was a strange, very particular man, uh, very strange manners, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and in 1648, he declares that he is the Messiah, okay? That he comes from the David's uh, 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 family, and he was born in Tisha B'Av, and all the signs that he is the Messiah. Of course, it's not very easy to be Messiah because uh, uh, people ask you, especially the religious authority, I mean, how come, you know? <laughs> uh, um, and he gets opposition, I mean, uh, um, the, the rabbis, the religious authority of, the, of Izmir, uh, automatically uh, rejects him, okay? And he was excommunicated. He goes around uh, to North Africa, to Gaza, to Jerusalem, to Tzafad, and comes back in 65, in 1665. But in the meantime, I mean, the whole of the East Mediterranean area, uh, the Balkans, Europe, Amsterdam, they all know about Shabtai Tzvi, and he gets a lot of followers, not only in Izmir, but all over. And he comes back in 1665 to Izmir, and, in, and he is more and more uh, accepted and followed. Uh, but at the same time, he has a lot of objection from the religious authority. And in uh, 1666, on a Shabbat Baboker, uh, in a Shabbat uh, morning, okay, um, with his followers, he wants to pray the Shabbat morning's prayer in Portugal synagogue. That was one of the earliest synagogues in Izmir, and they go there chanting and, and singing and dancing. I mean, these, these are descriptions uh, that are real. Why real? Because we learned that from the writings of a Dutch priest who was in a, in, in a, a, a placed in Izmir and he was taking, you know, he was writing diaries, okay? And on the way to Portugal synagogue, which is, very close to there. I mean, you just cross the street, okay? Then I, I don't think there was a street. And you walk 50 meters and you're at Portugal Synagogue. And they, uh, this is the entrance of Portugal Synagogue today, okay? And, uh, and they want to come in and pray and the, the door is, is locked. They don't want him there, neither their followers. They break in. The, they break in. They chase away the opposing rabbis, and uh, they uh, make a service. They hold a service there. And Shabtai says, "You know, I am marrying the Torah Bible," and he brings women to the bima to the teva to pray. And uh, and these are unacceptable things. I mean, today, I mean, a reformist movement, uh, reformism in Judaism started some, I don't know, 50 years ago in the States, maybe, maybe less. And we're talking about 1660. He is, you know, called to the, um, to the um, palace, uh, to the Sultan, and he was uh, offered two options, uh, to die or to convert to Islam. He says, okay, I'll be Muslim. What? Why? It doesn't really matter. I'm Messiah. I mean, it really doesn't matter whether I'm a Jewish, a Christian, or, or Muslim. But this uh, disappoints a lot of followers, and some of them keep following him. He is expatriated, and, and he dies in Albania. Now, until today, this is a very uh, important issue because this is a story. Uh, that took place in, in, in Izmir, 
And, and this guy really uh, influenced a lot of movements. I mean, Hasidic movement uh, is based upon his, uh, his uh, foundations, for example. And, um, and, and today, Jews don't want to talk about him that much because he, he, you know, he, he converted to Islam and he did a lot of things that are not really compatible with the Orthodox or uh, 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 Orthodox Judaism. And not completely Muslims, kosher, you're saying. Not sorry? considered not considered completely kosher. Yeah, he's not. And the Turks, Muslim Turks, don't really like him because he converted to Islam, but he continued to be Jewish and 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 spread his uh, the Judaism in his uh, in his church. So nobody talks about. And there is a funny situation where his house is not called Shabtai Tzvi's house. It's, it's, it has another name. And one of the things that we are trying to do is to get, I mean, whether you like him or not, it really doesn't matter. It's a piece of history that took place here and it affected the whole world. And, it, and this is one of the you know, main issues of our heritage. This was... Portugal synagogue uh, three, uh, four years ago. Uh, it, it burned completely in 76. The community didn't have the resources to, to restore it. So we uh, gave it to an association uh, in return for restoration. But since we didn't really know, I mean, there was nothing left in it, okay? And we didn't think we should reconstruct, to remake a synagogue. And, uh, and it became a conference hall, okay? So I use it a lot for film screenings in, uh, in, in, in the Izmir International Sephardic Culture Festival or other conferences or films or other activities. Uh, so it has turned in from being a synagogue into a, a cultural, um, let's say, uh, center. Here, there's another picture with the movies. This was a movie made by a, a, an Ismaili, an Ismaili uh, Jewish person about the trade that is made between Turkey and Israel, a hair trade for the religious people, you know, women. This is Beit Hilal Synagogue as it was uh, in 2014. So, okay, I'm showing you a lot of destroyed places, but this is our reality. I mean, a lot of places were destroyed and the community didn't really have resources to, 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 to restore them. I mean, these are the building stones of the museum, open air museum that I talked about. I mean, what am I talking about? Everything is uh, ruined, yeah? Uh, and in 2014, with the help of the municipality of Izmir, we turned it into a memorial house for Rabbi Chaim Palachi, who is very well known in the religious circles in the world, and his teachings are still uh, being uh, learned, uh, taught, uh, and uh, every year there are groups of uh, um, religious people who come to celebrate his birth date, his, uh, uh, his death uh, date, etc., etc. So it's a small, it's a, it's a small museum if you want to, uh, where you can see, where people can see the uh, some Judaica objects like. Sefer Torah, Me'il Torah, Keter, Rimonim, Yad, etc., etc. This is the chief rabbinate building. Okay, so uh, these are all on the same side of the of the old Jewish quarter. It used to be, it was built in 1841. Um, a Rothschild Foundation from Vienna helped uh, to buy the land. And the, the, this was the administration of the Israel Jewish community from 1841 until 1970. 
it is a beautiful place, but unfortunately uh, today we only have its facade. It is it has collapsed twice, and there is a dispute between us and the treasury of the state about uh, the ownership of the place. Uh, I hope we're gonna solve it and we're gonna uh, somehow restore the place and and and, and give it uh, give to it a function. And it will still be a Jewish site that uh, uh, that that will be within the context of the Jewish heritage of Israel. Uh, so we'll, what, we'll try and we'll try and have a benefit concert at the Yiddish Avolka next year. Okay. Uh, I can understand. <laughs> we, we can. We'll try to have a benefit concert at the Yiddish Avolka next year. Oh, great! So wow, you made my day. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Now. This place, the, 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 the chief rabbinet now looks like that. This is a picture taken from uh, uh, before the third festival uh, of uh, Jewish festival. Uh, we cleaned the place, but what you see is the facet of the, of the, of the chief rabbinet and you don't have anything behind it. Well, there was, maybe you can see inside the gate, you know, that it's uh, you know it's it's open it has no roof nothing and it is it is still going on uh, you know collapsing slowly uh, there was a matzah factory as well behind it uh, it was a very central place that had the Beit Din you know the the Jewish uh, uh, court uh, what we tried to do I mean we try to keep it alive. Uh, I cannot say that we uh, we really succeed in it, but you know, with such things, for example, an installation in the garden uh, of of the uh, of the uh, chief rabbinate, which is called neighborliness, uh, you know, uh, by a Turkish artist, uh, people come and and visit. But then again, uh, when you don't use it for a year. It's uh, it becomes a forest, okay? Okay, so what we have seen is only a part of the Izmir immovable uh, uh, heritage, Jewish heritage. What we did was, uh, wait, okay, no, no, no. okay. What we did, I cannot move the prompter, I don't know, okay. Okay, yeah, yeah, I am there. So, we have seen Bikur Cholim Synagogue, Chavez Synagogue. Then we were at this corner and here in front of it, uh, at this side, we, there was a Shabtai Tzvi's house. Uh, then we followed his path to Portugal Synagogue. And by the way, this street was registered in the Ottoman Empire as the chief rabbi street, a very long street, okay? And we have come to Beit Hilal Synagogue, Chaim Palach's memorial house, and the chief rabbinate, okay? So we take this street, uh, this is Bohor Levi Street, all right. Do you pay attention to the how many J Jewish names are? Uh, how many streets are called after Jewish names? You know, and and there was yes. no problem with it. But after the uh, the um, uh, establishment of the republic, and you know, within the efforts of building a nation, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, all those names are uh, are wiped out. Together with all Greek names and Arabic names, etc. Okay, so we walk in the street and we hit the synagogue's bazaar. Okay, it's a very noisy bazaar. People still, you know, you know, it's a very uh, Eastern bazaar with a lot of shouting, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we um, we get here to this street. Uh, that was called in the old maps the street of uh, synagogues. This was the synagogues bazaar, and this street, uh, where well, you see the number six, uh, is uh, the uh, synagogue streets that go around all those synagogues that are numbered in, in red. So, number six 
is Etz Chaim Synagogue. Etz Chaim Synagogue was about to really collapse in 2014. We, it looked a bit like that. I mean, like that, you see the ceiling that is falling and uh, everything is rotten. And the, and, and the floor was also sinking just about to fall down. So we got a grant uh, from Ambassador's um, Fund and we stabilized the place. And then we got money from the, a grant from the, from the Turkish government and it became more or less like that in this picture. Uh, as you see, it was a conserved, not really polished. We, what we did was to scrap the walls because in the walls you had this color, this uh, turquoise color everywhere, you know, uh, which was quite pretty, but uh, it was uh, very, uh, you know, it didn't tell us a story. Whereas here, the, the walls, when we scrapped them, we found three different periods of pencil works, of, of ornaments and inscriptions, etc., uh, etc. Et so I recommend uh, you to come and see. <laughs> uh, uh, today, even it looks better because this picture was taken uh, quite uh, uh, at least six months ago. And today we finished the last phase of the uh, conservation works. Um, this is the same synagogue, and we not it's not gonna be an active synagogue because the Turk the Izmir Jewish community counts only one thousand people. Okay, so and they live in another district where there is a very modern synagogue, and people go there. This won't be an active synagogue, but this is already in one year, even before we finish the work, uh, the, the conservation work, which was finished uh, today, uh, we held uh, the uh, activities there. This is a concert by Isabelle Durand from France last year, and, uh, and, uh, and it was beautiful, you see? This is in the same uh, synagogue, uh, another concert, uh, this is a, a um, contemporary dance a performance in the same synagogue. Uh, this is another one, uh, having for mother from Andalusia to Anatolia, having a, a Jewish motives in it as well. So, um, so actually, it became this synagogue became the only, the only, um, the first, let's say, the leading a culture, artistic and cultural hub of, of the bazaar, of the old downtown, of which we are very happy because, you know, a, I mean, this is a synagogue that is leading cultural life in the city. So, uh, and at the basement, that was a yeshiva, and that was about to collapse. We have now an art gallery. And we've been, you know, we had in one year nine concerts and and four uh, exhibitions, and we still have tomorrow. We're opening another exhibition, then there will be another one, etc. So, okay, this is uh, another uh, exhibition uh, by Barbara Yoav, but mitzvah exhibition, but mitzvah photography, you know. Photographers, and it was very. I was very happy to learn that there was a photographer who who documented bat mitzvah because we were always talking about bar mitzvah, which is for boys. And so we had one for girls, and I jumped on it and I said, "Let's uh, exhibit it." This is Hevra. I mean, this is the Talmud Torah synagogue right after. Right, it's it's it's. Uh, 30 meters from, from Etz Chaim Synagogue, okay? This is how it looked in, in 20, uh, 2020. You couldn't really get into it because uh, the, col uh, the roof collapsed in 1999. Uh, that was already 21 years ago. The place uh, looked like this, like, uh, you know, you couldn't really get into it because the door wasn't. We had to jump over the 
uh, over the walls. And um, I was lucky to get a grant from the German uh, government to, to rescue this place because it was, this was about to fall down again also. And what we did was to clean the rubble, to put a temporary roof so that it would protect it from uh, climate conditions and, and, and trees won't grow. And now we have a rescued uh, synagogue space in, I mean, we have only the, the Echal, you know, uh, and, and, and the place of the, of the, of the, of the um, Teva, the Bima, uh, but it's a, a beautiful place because the walls are telling us a lot. There are at least four layers of ornaments, you know, pencil works, etc. And uh, and we do. When, in, sorry, Nesim, when was it built? It was built in in 1640. It existed. Okay. We don't know exactly yeah. when it was built, but it's yeah. 1640. Uh, it existed. What do we do in it? Uh, we're not gonna reconstruct a synagogue in it. We have enough synagogue. <laughs> uh, I don't know what we will do. Now we are talking with the curators, but in the meantime, uh, this is what we are doing, and it is beautiful. Uh, uh, this is another angle of uh, the same concert. Uh, a, a lot of people come; people, you know, are admire the place. We admire, uh, and actually, together with uh, Etzchayim Synagogue that we have just seen and Talmud Torah Synagogue. We have already contributed to the city two performance halls, one a, a, a one art gallery, and uh, and it's working. And they are the only places that are working in the old city, and they will be the trigger to develop the old city that everybody wants. Okay, because at that time it's like I don't know how it is in Germany, but it's like. Kashmir in Poland, you know, in Krakow. Kashmir was the old Jewish uh, district, but, you know, before they started doing such things, they, you couldn't enter because it was, you know, full of criminals, etc. You couldn't walk at night. The same thing happens here, but now the people are starting to come and you can walk at night. It's not the end. I mean, it's only the beginning, but it's happening. Oh, fantastic. I mean, because the Polish festival has so uh, one in, in in Krakow has really brought that yeah. all back to life. Yeah, and it's, it's a fight we have here yeah. because it's hard. We keep on insisting that culture is the key. Yeah. That stones have to have sounds and have to have life to them, but it's quite difficult. I mean, in Dresden, there's a real controversy going on here right now, but let me give the let me give the the mic back to you, okay, Nessie. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, I mean, the thing is that I mean, uh, if you ask me, what is your motivation to do all that? I'm not a religious person. I don't want to build uh, uh, synagogues and and pray in it. I mean, whoever wants, uh, of course, can pray. But um, it, I mean, all these activities. Uh, Starting from restoring the buildings uh, uh, to uh, making uh, uh, to holding activities, for me is uh, is 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 a uh, um, to be present as Jewish community because I mean in um, not like in Europe and the United States, the Jewish communities of the East, of the Eastern Mediterranean in Turkey have lived with, you know, inside their shell. They didn't really show or they didn't want to be um, uh, perceived, you know. So if you don't know that I'm here, I'm better off because you don't, you won't deal with me and when you won't do anything to me, I'm not here, okay? But uh, this is wrong because, uh, you know, uh, anti-Semites know you, you know. They know who is Jewish, who is not Jewish, who is homosexual, who is Jewish, who is communist. 
you know, like in Germany, well, like what happened in Germany. So there is no point in hiding. So that's a, that's what I think. So I open up the doors and the windows. I let people come in. I mean, people who are here are not Jews. I mean, maybe you have 10 Jews here out of 200 people. Okay. Uh, so I welcome them. I want them to see, uh, to hear the music of the uh, Jewish people and to hear conferences about Judaism and uh, and to be involved and relevant to the society. Okay. This way they will know. This this is my way to fight anti-Semitism, if you want to put it that way. Okay. This is Al Ghazi Synagogue and uh, 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 built by Al Ghazi family. It existed in 1648. We know we know that. We know that because we know that Shabtats we uh, visited there and at that time. And um, because you know, in Turkey, in Israel, you have this uncertainty about about the dates of foundation of, of buildings. You know, nobody knows exactly when it was built. Uh, but we know some certain points, you know, milestones. So, okay, he was there when he declared that he's Messiah. So we know that in 1648, the synagogue uh, uh, existed. It probably looked different because uh, somebody uh, made some ornaments in 2005 that don't belong to this place. But we can see that typical uh, Sephardic synagogue type with the with the uh, teva in the middle, and 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 we see uh, the echal, uh, the aron kodesh. It's interesting in Izmir you have all you have, you have a triple triple composition of the echal. You know you have the echal where the sifrei uh, Torah are uh, are are are, um, are put, and then you have two more cupboards like one here and one on the other side in all synagogues you don't see that in istanbul and you don't see that in europe so where does it come from i don't know i mean nobody knows but i have lately read or you know paid attention that uh, in uh, toledo synagogue in spain that was built i think it was uh, 1200 they had a triple composition and they had the same thing in Cordoba synagogue. So when I think of what is Spanish, okay, in, 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 in our culture, in our architecture, this might be one of those things, you know, because you don't have other synagogues in, in Spain, I know, old synagogues, they have wiped them out, uh, you know, the synagogues. Okay, so who was this Al Ghazi? Look, there is an interesting uh, uh, story that I always tell, and I, you know, I make a big fuss out of it. Uh, the the um, one of the latest rabbis of the synagogue was Ishaq Al Ghazi, son of a dynasty that is called uh, Al Ghazi. <clears throat> he was uh, born in the third quarter of, of uh, uh, 19th century. And he was a great musician until now. I mean, he was, he's very, very well known in, in, in Turkey. Um, he, he, he's a composer of uh, Jewish uh, religious music, uh, Jewish secular music, uh, classical Ottoman music, uh, and, uh, and a singer as well. He was the teacher of uh, I mean there is there is a close by you have a big mosque okay and he was the teacher of the imam of this mosque okay so that's but that's not I mean that could happen that's not all okay but they become friends and uh, and they come to this synagogue to to listen to to the music to the pew team and then they go to the mosque they listen to it but as one is Jewish and the other Muslim, they don't enter churches, okay? So they listen to it, uh, to, to the music of the churches uh, from the windows or something like that. But at the end, afterwards, they all go together, the leading musicians, I mean, Christian, Muslim, and Jews, 
of the of the city to a Sufi house that is not very far from there to for jam sessions. You know, uh, that's that's I think that's beautiful because and I use it and I use it because it's important to use that. Because it's not politics, it's people who make music, who make art, who make culture that are uh, uh, living together and making something together. And in the same synagogue, um, two festivals ago, this group that is composed of the Turkish radio and television uh, musicians, that none of them is Jewish, in the synagogue, they played the music, they gave a concert of Ishaq al-Ghazi and Rakim and this imam. So it was full house and, uh, you know, I got very excited when we, so did people. And this is one of the ways, I mean, this is, but this synagogue is an active synagogue. It's not very easy to use it. Uh, people who pray are not very happy. So we're going to have to use the other ones for a, for cultural activity, but they were okay with the woman singing. Yes, they were okay, and you, you couldn't do that in another place. I mean, this is Al Ghazi's music in Al Ghazi yeah. synagogue. <laughs> yeah. Okay, fantastic. Uh, this is Forastero synagogue. This is one of the synagogues that are very close to each other. It's complete. I mean, this it looks like that. And uh, but I was lucky enough to get another grant from the German uh, government, and and we're gonna do exactly the same thing that we did in the previous one to rescue this place, okay? With a temporary roof, and uh, I don't know what we're gonna do inside when you know the restorations plans have started, but we think of using this place not as a synagogue. Or there's nothing. I mean, there's. Nothing that uh, gives you the feeling that there is a synagogue, okay? Because um, because we only have walls, but uh, we think of making a, a place, a site uh, that addresses the senses, the feelings more than, you know, not objects or things like that. Maybe, um, I don't know, somehow a darkish place with... Uh, Sounds of the Hazan, you know, latest Hazan or kids or, you know, a door opens. And I don't know. I'm just uh, fantasizing right now. But uh, we'll see what we do. Uh, we are now rescuing it, which means that we're cleaning. We are uncovering the uh, basement that there was. We are opening up the passages, the pathways that are around it. Uh, and we're going to put a temporary roof in the time being, okay? This is the same uh, destroyed place that we have a reception. So uh, it really doesn't matter whether it's uh, destroyed or uh, collapsed uh, when we, we can still use them. As you see, there are lots of people who came and uh, uh, this was actually the opening of the, of the second festival. This is La Senora Synagogue. Why is it called La Senora Synagogue? Because um, the land uh, that uh, this uh, synagogue sits on belonged to a family. We don't know the name of the husband, we, but we know that there was a certain lady that uh, her name was Leah. And she, in the year of 1664, a, wants to move to Jerusalem. She's a widow and she, she wants to finish her life in, in, in Jerusalem. And she contributes, don, donates the land to the Jewish community of, for building a synagogue, okay? Uh, building synagogue is very important. People are, you know, at this time, I mean, it was even very important. Uh, and uh, she only had one uh, wish that um, they will read Ashkaba prayer uh, until the end of the days, but I think they forgot that uh, very quickly. So, what we have here a synagogue, we don't have here, look, we have the pillars, and uh, we don't have in this synagogue, let's see if we have an, okay, yeah, we can see here. So, once the uh, the the teva the altar was in uh, uh, within the, this these four columns, but it was moved 
to the front, as we see here. Okay. So it's very interesting why they did this. Uh, colonialism, colonialism. Uh, uh, well, I, I don't Ashkenazi know. Ashkenazi colonialism. Uh, well, uh, that uh, could be, but uh, well, don't provoke me because. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, now, what happened, I think, is that in 1860s, uh, in France, a group of uh, young uh, Jewish uh, French people established a school that is called Alliance Universelle uh, Israelite, which, I mean, the Jewish Universal Alliance, and their aim was to help their religious, uh, their brothers in the in the in the in the East Mediterranean, North African, in the in the underdeveloped uh, countries uh, regions, and and our region was one of them. Uh, so they established schools. They taught French and and uh, professions, and people started to learn French. And learning a language is not only vocabulary, it's a whole world. It's a, French is a Europe, Europe is a modernism. It's a West, uh, what is modern, what is, what is uh, Western culture? It's uh, basically Christian culture. What is Christian culture? I mean, I'm simplifying it, okay? It, it's, it's church, uh, I mean, uh, not synagogue, church. So in church, you, uh, the priest, addresses his uh, his uh, uh, congregation frontally right like at universities opposed to what we have in bikur Cholim, in shalom you know people sit uh, facing each other so i think this is i don't know if it's colonialism but it is of course it is an a western influence that shaped uh, some of the synagogues in this way yeah this is uh, another, I mean, it's not an active synagogue anymore. So we use it for a, for a, um, a cultural uh, uh, activities, conferences, uh, other conferences, and other conferences. Okay. So uh, actually, I think I have. Um, a finished my presentation a we can a, we can talk about it more we can make another session but i don't think it's uh, it's necessary uh, because uh, besides the immovable heritage there is a lot of a uh, uh, um, heritage that is uh, uh, intangible uh, heritage in form of a, a, the a Echal curtains, parochot, a collection of parochot, a collection of shivitis, and uh, can, you, can, of, can you explain what they are for the audience that might not okay, do it? Okay, so I, let's. I, I'm gonna try to find a, a picture. Okay, yeah. and I'll tell you. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> I think I, I don't think I will find one here. Okay. Well, let me see. But if you told me that, okay. No, I've seen here. I'm sorry. Um, don't become dizzy. <laughs> I, I think I, okay. What is parochet? Okay. So here we see the, the echad, I mean, the Ark of the Covenant, where, right. where the table, where, where the stones, where the uh, low, the Mo Moses received from God were uh, were were uh, uh, stored in the desert in a tent, actually, because there was not there was no temple, there was no a synagogue, and there was no wood and stone. So it was a tent, and the law. This means the Ten Commandments. Okay, were put there, and they were separated by a curtain. Okay, it was a special place that was called Holy of the Holies or Holiest of the Holies, something like that. And, and it was a curtain that separated them from, from others, okay? And this is, a, this is incredible because 
this is a some 4000 years uh, tradition and we still use this tradition we go with it and we put a curtain within the cupboard that we call a hal or ark of the covenant okay this is a parochet and we see it here on the uh, on 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 uh, on one of the uh, um one of the cupboards that uh, that uh, form the the triple composition of the Echal. So what is Parochet? Parochet, we said, this is that curtain. It is called Parochet. How the core of Parochet is made, uh, it's a pity that I don't have a full picture here. A Parochet mm -hmm. is, a, is a donation to the synagogue. Okay. It's a donation to elevate a, the soul of a dead man, okay, or dead woman. So, in the Sephardic tradition, you take something from your daily life. This, these are a, a bed covers, a table clothes, a, a bride. A, how do you say that? Bright uh, dresses, wedding yeah. dresses, yeah, a, and other things. You work on them, you know, you, or, with ornaments, and you write in Hebrew um, for whom, by whom, when it is donated. So, yeah. and this makes it a, a religious item, okay? So this is a parochet, and in the Sephardic tradition, it is something that is used in daily life. In Ashkenazi tradition, it is not like that. It is made especially yeah. for... The, for the echad, uh, for the this is parochet. If I manage to uh, uh, to explain, and uh, shivitis are the only um, kind of artwork that that was the, that was allowed in yeah. Judaism because you know in Judaism you cannot paint a. a uh, you cannot make paintings of of uh, of uh, human images. Uh, yeah. and, uh, you can only draw the fruits, uh, things that uh, symbolizes uh, 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 prosperity, uh, like grenades, like uh, mm -hmm. olives, like this, and shivitis that are religious items. This will be uh, another uh, <laughs> session's uh, topic, I think. Yeah. So, uh, and there are stories, there are people, you know. And there are there is press. There were twenty six Jewish newspapers that were uh, being published in Israel. So all that all that is a part of the this project. And uh, this year we are publishing four uh, books also together with the restorations, of which uh, one is a parochet catalog. Uh, one is the Jewish press in uh, in Izmir. It, we cannot. Um, it's 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 subject for a lot of books, uh, but an introduction to Jewish press because it's going to be the first book about uh, this uh, subject in uh, Turkey. And another one of the status status of women in in the Jewish communities. And uh, another one uh, is the Jewish stories of Israel. So we're trying to uh, restore buildings and yeah. also to provide a, a contents that are uh, uh, beyond the ritual objects and parochot and all those things that uh, um, exist in synagogues. Well, I. Uh, I think, you know, up to now, if there are any questions, let's uh, go with questions. Um, well, I have some questions. I yeah. don't know. Niels, can you see if there's any questions? No. Okay. There's not. Um, a first, kind of a technical question. So did every synagogue have a community that came from a different country? Uh, some of them did. For example, yeah. Portugal synagogue is explicitly uh, built by uh, <clears throat> Portuguese uh, Jewish people that uh, immigrated to Israel. Uh, yeah. Actually, Portugal 
Jewry uh, had a very important role in Izmir's uh, Jewish history. Um, Portugal and and uh, Livorno in Italy. Right, okay? right. The two yeah. Livorno is a huge uh, yeah. Sephardic so, city. Yeah. So there were a lot of people who dealt in 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 trade, and they were quite wealthy when they came to Izmir. Okay, and 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 they actually led the community, okay? So they built Portugal synagogue. That was the uh, probably the, one of the earliest ones. And, and they settled in, in this, um, a, let me go back because it's uh, okay. Okay. Uh, and they settled in this area. Okay. That was, and the port was here. So they preferred to settle next to the port because the trade was going on there right. both lands everything so they established shalom this was the portuguese but and even foresteros was uh, portuguese okay so uh, what happened but afterwards what happened is that uh, you know they they got mixed because uh, right. in, in 1700s in 1800s uh, it was not, I mean, the Portugal, Portuguese people went to, to Portugal and the Spanish people went to another place. And those who came from Livorno uh, to another place. Because, for example, Jews that came from Livorno, Italy, did not build an Italian synagogue like mm. uh, it happened in, in Istanbul. There's an Italian synagogue. Right, right. So it was quite mixed. But in terms of the founders, uh, yes. I, the Kurholim, Salomon de Chavez of Chavez right. uh, district. It was a Portuguese as well. Right. But there um, was no distinction. I mean, they go here and we go there. And and when was there, I mean, when was the main emigration? Was there emigration in, in 1492 or in 15? Or when were the, the Jews were kicked out of Portugal in when? Uh, 15. In 1492, uh, in Spain, uh, that was in Spain, and right. uh, and the Sultan right. of uh, uh, the Ottoman Empire sent a couple of vessels, uh, yeah. and, and they are very proud of this, and they remind yeah. us until today we have uh, welcome <laughs> people, we are very <laughs> tolerant, and I say to right. them, don't be tolerant. I don't want tolerance. I'm not that terrible. Yeah, so, uh, that's what I'm. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Working on, I mean, not tolerance is uh, intercultural respect. That's what's important, I think. Yeah. And anyway, so uh, and uh, what were were we told? Well, I, I lost. No, the... I wanted to know when the and ah, for example, okay. were there were there conversos who came to Izmir, or uh, was, was it no mostly way. people who came directly? Okay. No, there were. Uh, uh, there was not a one one group. Okay, right. Uh, the big group came from Spain. Okay, to the Ottoman Empire or right. to other places. Right. And that was in 1492. Mm. Uh, and some went to Portugal, escaped to Portugal. Right. But uh, unfortunately, uh, some seven years after, I think seven. Yeah. Uh, there was uh, the the Portuguese Inquisition took place, right? And there were also a lot of conversos in Portugal. One of them was Dona Gracia Mendes, uh -huh. which is very well known <laughs> in the <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. And 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 she came to the Ottoman Empire. She was very friendly. She even uh, gave credit, you know, money to the uh, finance a lot of things for the Sultan of the. The, the the Suleiman the magnificent uh, the magnificent the magnificent yeah and uh, anyway they were um, but and there were those conversos okay right. that were called maranos right what means maranos it's it means pigs okay yeah. so some of them came to Izmir and they built Portugal synagogue. And uh, but but you know they came back to to Judaism. I mean they were they never left because you cannot stop being Jewish. Okay, right? You can convert for the sake of 
you know, being safe or something like that. But you always Jewish, but you're not looked upon well. Okay, that's why they call them maranos, which is pigs, and pig is a disastrous thing in Judaism. We don't eat pig, we don't see pig. If we say somebody speaks, so it's it's the worst of all. And and they are called maranos, you know. But they lack this community in big portions, you know. The yeah. And and just one last question. Um, tell us about yourself. I mean, your uh, life story and how you ended up back in Izmir. Um, okay. Now, I was born in Izmir and uh, I, um, I, I, I grew up in Izmir and my mother, wa my mother was born here. Do you see the prompt? She was born here. My father came from another city. And he, he he installed his home here. They got married, and they moved to another district. And uh, and uh, and I was born. In a, I studied my high school in Israel. Then I went to Israel. I lived in Israel for quite a long time, some forty years, and mm -hmm. you know studied the army, whatever yeah. everybody does. Uh, and I, you know, for the uh, last uh, 20 years, I was in Haifa Cinematheque. I was the director of the Cinematheque. At some point, I wanted to change my life. Uh, and I was missing uh, Izmir um, because I found myself self, uh, watching Turkish TV and things like that. So I said, what's happening to me? And together with that feeling of being, you know, uh, enough, I have to do something new. <clears throat> I came back to Izmir. I was already invited for a festi uh, by a festival, film festival, uh, to, to 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 be the artistic director. So I, I had job, but you know, as I came, um, I wanted to walk in the streets where my father was taken when I was a little little kid. Uh, some, uh, you know. Uh, uh, because here on high holidays, there is a hammam, there is a Turkish bath. We would take a bath here, uh, like in Yom Kippur or, or in Pesach, Passover. And then we would uh, go to, uh, to, where is the synagogue? Okay, to this synagogue here, Al Ghazi. Okay. So I walked in the streets and then uh, they opened the synagogues and I saw, uh, you know, I was very fascinated because I, you know, I always thought that Turkish jewelry is not worth uh, something, you know. Yeah, you know, sometimes you have this feeling. And I suddenly was filled uh, with, I won't tell pride, but a good feeling, okay? Oh, wow, I said, they did all this, and then I saw here schools, and uh, then did symmetries, and and then Shabtai Tzvi came uh, 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 in front of me, and uh, and I got involved, and it's been fourteen years, yeah. And is your first? What's your first? Did you speak Ladino at home growing up? No, no. I, my parents spoke Ladino in this district. Everybody spoke Ladino. You went to the. Okay. Or you spoke, I mean, you, you, you bought your things in Ladino. And at home, they would speak Ladino. And, but there was a, sometime in the 30s, uh, 40s, uh, a, a campaign, nationalistic campaign in Turkey. Right, uh, right, right. Citizens speak Turkish. So they were afraid to speak Turkish, uh, um, Ladino. Yeah. Uh, it slowly died, you know. It slowly died because it wasn't spoken, and 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 uh, and, uh, and and that was a tendency, I think, uh, of people to feel uh, to belong, okay, to belong to the yeah. city. So they said, "We are Turkish people. Uh, why should we speak Ladino?" Until today, some people would say it's okay not to speak Ladino. They were right, you know, uh, and I think yeah. this was a disaster, and. Um, yeah. Uh, because language is, is not only technical, it's not only vocabulary, it's a whole world. Yeah. Right, right. No. And and did you grow up with Sephardic music or or not at all? I I came back to it afterwards okay. and 
Okay. I came so strong, you know, that I established yeah. the Sephardic music group in Izmir. And okay. uh, yeah, and it is important, but it broke. And now I'm going to non-Jews to make a, a Sephardic music. And, <laughs> I, and there is a group that makes Sephardic music and they play it in downtown in the middle of the most, you know, uh, underdeveloped. Uh, right. Uh, and it's, it's beautiful to see that, of course. Yeah, fantastic. And now a personal question. Are there, are, are there mikveot? In mikveh, the, in, yeah, no, we didn't find any mikveh. I'm sure there are, there is, but I we don't know where. And or do you I, think I that where they use the hammam instead of the mikveh? They, they used the hammam at one point, but yeah. there should be mikveh somewhere. But we're digging uh, slowly but carefully, but in the hope that uh, we're gonna find a mikveh somewhere. But it couldn't be that there is no mikveh in such a, a big uh, Jewish neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. All the synagogue. But uh, nobody knows. And we know that in the 18th, 19th, 19th century, they used the hammams for mikveh. Yeah. No. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Mm. Okay. Well, I think this is great. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think I, we... thank you. Yeah. Ah, fantastic. Uh, I think we need to do a Zoom, the two of us, to discuss. I have many more questions, but I think they're a little bit too uh, insider. Um, okay, I invite all of you to Izmir, you know, it's a, yeah. it's a nice city. It's a, the people are very hospital, with a lot of, of hospitality. Yeah. There's a great uh, old Jewish uh, uh, district next to Roman Agora, which is fantastic as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, we have very tasty food. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Better yeah, than yeah. our Ashkenazi stuff. Well, that's <laughs> you know, I I couldn't touch, a, I couldn't see a filter fish once. But I was, I was prejudiced. I had my prejudices. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, you know, I, oh, I don't eat a filter fish until <clears throat> I used to go to Berlin Ale every year. And okay. now, etc. I don't go. And we have there a group of German uh, filmmakers and festival directors, etc., etc. Yeah. And we were offered the filter fish, and I somehow uh, dared to taste uh, this awful looking thing, and it was very <laughs> tasty. <laughs> it was very tasty. Yeah. Okay. So, um, okay. okay. Yeah. No, but that's good. And maybe I hope we'll be able to work together sometime um, because it sounds very interesting what you're doing. It sounds in some ways that you've been more successful in building a cultural area and bringing in cultural Judaism than we are here in Dresden, where it's been a 26 year struggle. Um, and and I'd be interested in to to hear more of your ideas. But yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, of course. Why not? Why not? Okay. We can go on talking. Yeah. Okay. Is this